Welcome to Quest Tech Calibrations. In this video, we're going to be reviewing the Hisense U8H, which is their mini LED QLED for 2022. As of this review, the 55 inch model is $650 and the 65 inch is $1,000. However, if you decide to keep the TV after 100 days, there is a $100 rebate. So, we will be covering all the details of this TV, including its strengths and weaknesses. However, right off the bat, I will say that this is a fantastic value at or near $1,000 for the 65 inch model. And compared to its main competitor, the TCL R655, uh, this is notably better in video content, whereas the TCL is better for gaming. And that will be explained shortly. What this TV does great, though, is its HDR10 performance is really excellent for the price. The brightness is among the highest that I've measured at any price point. So if you do a typical window style measurement, it goes from a little over 800 nits in a full field window up to over 2000 nits in a 25% window at D65. However, using a new method that I have for measuring brightness that actually represents real content with a highlight at different APL or average picture level brightness, you can see this chart here, that it can hold that highlight roughly around 900 to 1000 nits pretty consistently and it goes from 0 to 1000 very quickly and then drops back also very quickly. In comparison to the TCL R655, its highlight is about 150 nits on average higher on the U8H than it is on the TCL. But also to show the color gamut or BT2020 coverage 80% is higher than the TCL and also very good for this price range or really any. Really only QD OLED will go higher at around 90%. Now another thing that you might see with like Samsung's in particular is in order to have the high gamut coverage they sacrifice P3 accuracy by oversaturating. This doesn't do that nearly as bad. You get some oversaturation in red but it's not terrible, not like the Samsung's. One of the biggest surprises for me with the U8H is that its color accuracy, while not great, is certainly much better than anything else in this price range, and really it's like on par with, say, a mid-range Sony X90K. The same could not be said for the TCL R655. Also, being that this is a Google OS TV, there's not really any issues with the settings or the available settings. Um, however, do note that there is a button on the remote above Netflix with three lines, doesn't say what it is. You need to press that when you're using an HDMI source and change the HDMI port to enhanced in order to get HDR. A lot of people will overlook that, but as long as you know that, then you'll be fine. Other than that though, like I said, the settings, the, it has everything that you could pretty much expect out of it. For the most part, they work pretty well. All right, so now let's talk about SDR. So SDR in this really isn't that bad. Out of the box, in filmmaker mode, color accuracy, average under three, that's pretty good. And then with just minor tweaks to white point, contrast and lowering the brightness because it is way too bright out of the box. We get the gamma dialed in 2.34, that's pretty good. Grayscale, fairly flat. Color errors drop to an average of 1.3. Again, this was just very basic adjustment. And you can see next to the A95K on the right that it's not that far off. Now there is a loss of contrast, especially in certain scenes like this, but it's not as bad as on other LCD models and all of them will not have the contrast of an OLED anyway. Now looking at anime, you can kind of see a little bit of that contrast difference, but overall the colors, again, they're not perfect, but they're really not bad at all, especially for this price. And remember that the A95K does not in any way compete with this TV at all, and this is showing how well the Hisense U8H is doing against a near reference image produced by the A95K. Also, for those of you that are going to use a soundbar, the legs do accommodate that. However, the TV does actually have pretty decent built in sound with a fairly large woofer on the back. Now, when it comes to dirty screen effect, this is going to be panel variants from one to another. Mine wasn't that bad, it was actually pretty good, uh, but one that you get may be different. So it's kind of not really that important to show. All right, now as we move into HDR formats, um, Dolby Vision really is not good on this TV. So this is one of its downsides. As you can see with the Dolby Vision on the top, how much brighter it lifts everything. You can see with that EOTF chart. And as we compare to the A95K, you can see how overly bright everything is. So there's a large loss of contrast, depth, 
and saturation because of how lifted that EOTF is in Dolby Vision. And you see even, in, especially in dark scenes or dark objects, they're just not very dark. You lose that atmosphere and when it comes to that with it being an LCD, so there is slight blooming, even though it is very good, there's still slight blooming. It just really looks washed out and bad with Dolby Vision. All right, now let's talk about gaming for a few minutes. First, in SDR gaming, you can make it bright. Like, it gets very bright for SDR gaming. However, there is major, major posterization on this that I have never seen anything like this on any other TV. As I load up Destiny, just on the loading screen, you see it immediately. That first had all those pink waves in it. This, you can see all these bands and lines and dark areas. Let me back up the camera, do it again. You see those pink waves in the image. That's all posterization, color banding. And this is visible within the game in dark areas especially. I'm going to show multiple examples of this here. And I'm going to show like even if I drop it down from 120 hertz to 60. And if I disable VRR, doesn't, I mean, it kind of helps a little, but it's still definitely there, definitely visible. So starting out here, you can see, turn up the exposure, how many rings are around that light right there. That just, it stands out so much when you have another display next to it that's that doesn't have this problem. Now, average person might think it's supposed to be there. They might think it's part of the game, but it's not. If I look up into the sky, you just see tons of wavy lines. If I look down into shadowy dark areas, you just see this like glowing with pink edges around it. And it just really is distracting. This is not something that someone who really cares about gaming is going to want. You can see now I've dropped it down to 4K60. I've turned off VRR. Same thing. Again, it's not quite as bad, but it's still certainly noticeable. The other thing to know is that this TV does not resolve full 4K resolution at 120 hertz. It does cut the resolution similar to the Sony TVs with the X1 processor. So again, this is stripped down, 4K 60, VRR is turned off, and still, same problem. Again, not quite as bad, but it's still there. Even SDR, just sitting here staring at the Xbox dashboard, you see it in those lines that move on the dashboard. You also see horizontal colored lines that are not supposed to be there. So this TV definitely has banding, posterization, processing issues that are heavily worse in game mode. In movie modes, it still has issues with gradation, which I'll show in a minute, um, but it's not nearly like it is in game mode. But for the average casual gamer who's not going to really notice that stuff too much, you know, I'm just going to let this Forza intro play. You know, you probably won't care too much. You probably won't see it. So it's really for the people that want to buy a TV mostly for gaming that this should be a concern. Otherwise, it's probably fine for most people. As far as input lag, ghosting, responsiveness, things like that, it's fine. Um, nothing really stood out as an issue there. When measured, game mode does have some crushing near black. Uh, there is a game menu on the TV, you can adjust the black level shadow detail a little bit if you find that's crushing too much. Okay, so now in filmmaker mode, you can still make out noticeable banding and posterization on the U8H in comparison to the Sony. This is where the price cuts were made in order to get the rest of the performance so good is when it comes to processing. So. Uh, UHD scaling is fine. There's some artifacts, not terrible, but then when we look at upscaling from lower resolution sources, that's where you really start to see more issues. And then when we look at motion, so the TCL R655 had forced smoothing when everything was off and far less control. This gives you lots of control. However, there is artifacts pretty much no matter what, even when it's turned off. Um, but that said, there isn't really any noticeable for smoothing. So, you know, it's, I would say this is definitely better than the TCL and probably in line, you know, what you would see from Samsung with their motion. Um, motion is really personal preference as to what part of motion bothers you or doesn't bother you. Uh, but that said, I think most people are going to be fine with the motion on the U8H. All right, and then when it comes to the black bars and haloing, blooming dark scenes, this is like a worst case scenario here. 
You can see the black bar on the top does raise a bit. It's not terrible. Um, it's not the best, but it is very good, especially like compared to Sony, who lets the black bars raise a lot. All right, and then for sports, SDR, again, gets very bright. You see on the Sony, I just reset it, so if there was any dimming, that's as bright as the A95K will get for sports compared to the U8H. There's no contest. I also have my curtains open. You can see a little bit of reflection from the windows, and it does a pretty good job overall of being very bright in a bright room, and especially when it comes to hockey with all the white, it definitely gets a lot brighter. So when it comes to very bright room viewing, not a problem at all. Okay, so we're going to wrap up now. The U8H is really fantastic for $1,000. Let's put gaming to the side. Everything else, for most people, is going to be fantastic. Um, it's really hard to even think of another LCD this year that can match its black level blooming and brightness control. Now again, it does sacrifice some processing, and while the accuracy is very good, it's not fantastic. Um, so, whereas if you went with a Sony, which is going to cost more money, um, you would sacrifice the black level and the blooming in order to get a little more accurate and better processing. If you go with an LG QNED85, uh, we haven't seen the 90 yet, that should be coming soon, um, but if you go that route, you would be paying considerably more money to get a, maybe a little better accuracy, some better processing, uh, better gaming, but at the sacrifice of not getting as bright. And also the QNED85 does have this light leakage issue that's a panel lottery. And then when it comes to Samsung with the QN90B, there's a lot of local dimming issues surrounding that TV. There's issues with its color gamut, um, its accuracy, I would say is probably worse than the U8H, uh, at least in most regards. So, again, you'd be paying more to have different kind of trade-offs. Uh, so it's really hard to think of another LCD-based TV in 2022 that would be better than the U8H, at least when it comes to its, again, the three main things that it does so well is brightness, black level, blooming control, I would say the X90K, which is similarly priced, is a more well-rounded display for most people if gaming is a bigger concern. Um, or if you want to go with the TCL R655, check my review on that to see if you can live with the issues that it has uh, if you're more into gaming. Uh, but if gaming is more casual or not that important, then this is the thousand dollar king for you now when it comes to looking at oleds there are some oled models especially if you're still able to find last year models that would be not too much more um, and then that just comes down to your preference of if you like a brighter capable lcd type panel or if you like oled for the darker scenes that an lcd just will never be able to handle as well as an oled so I think that pretty much covers it all. Uh, the Hisense U8H is going to be pretty much my budget choice for 2022. Uh, everything 1000 and under. Again, unless gaming is much more important than maybe pay the couple hundred or a few hundred bucks more for an X90K to have something more, like I said, balanced, but it does have its shortcomings. But anything under this... I would just say either go down to the 55 inch model, which is 650 bucks. Uh, like this is the best HDR performance you're gonna get from an LCD based TV at almost any price. So it would be very hard to make a case for basically anything else under a thousand dollars, and even you know up to fifteen or eighteen hundred dollars, you're still struggling to think of something better than this. So. Definitely recommend the U8H if that's your price range, if it hits the, the boxes that you're looking for. Again, the main group that I would say should look elsewhere is hardcore gamers or people who are looking for the best looking gaming modes. Maybe give this one a pass then. Otherwise, it should be at the top of your list. So that's going to be it. I hope this helps you out. I thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one, everyone.